people were nicer. <laughs> now there's no such thing as loyalty and there's no security. So how can people be nice anymore? Their basic needs are threatened every day. <laughs> so therefore they become very unhappy and angry people. <laughs> therefore they get... And, and <coughs> society is becoming so bad People are, have reached their limits, so they, they can't handle it, they take a gun and go and shoot them. <laughs> it's true. You How can't push it? and push and push. There's a breaking point for everyone. <laughs> I was told this story long uh, ago that happened, maybe 20 years ago, 25 years ago. There's this guy, he's, he came from India, so he started up an auto company, fixing and so on. So then he hired these people, a couple of people. And then, but then he treated them so harshly, so harshly, so harshly he treated them every day, saying bad things, you know, because they are, um, they are not, this guy is Indian, but he's looking down at the, the local people he hired. He say you are this kind of people, you are... So every day, so after a few, I think maybe a few years, the, one of the workers could not stand it. Went to his home, knock on his door, he saw him and then boom, shot him in front of his family, and then called the police and said, I've killed this guy. So you can't keep pushing and pushing and thinking you can squeeze the people, squeeze the people. <laughs> Some people cannot tolerate it and they will break and they have no choice. And recently I was saying there's one man, his mother died in the hospital because the doctor promised him they will save the mother, but the mother died. Heart surgery or something. So he, he couldn't handle it. He just shot the doctor. Oh. <laughs> So now everyone in the hospital will be scared. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the point, right? But some of women in Vedic culture have so much tolerance. Right? Usually sometimes husbands are very nasty. nasty, but still they just... Yeah, that is based on culture. So they see their parents, they all tolerate the, the nonsense the husbands or grandparents have done. So then it, be, it has become a, a norm in, uh, in India. It's a culture, uh, it's ingrained in all Indian women that they, they are supposed to take abuses. It's not, it's where you see. Devaguti wasn't uh, uh, <laughs> beaten up by <laughs> Kardamamuni. <laughs> where did she get beaten up? Not at all. He gave her everything she wanted. Actually, the Vedic culture is the woman she treated like a queen. Queen or a princess. It's true. Well, don't look at your husband now. What <laughs> 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 huh? I'm saying all Prabhu's not this point. No, it's true. You're supposed to treat them like Lakshmi's. Mm -hmm. And then then Lakshmi will remain in the house. <laughs> that is very culture. Not what India I read quite or hear a lot. They beat up uh, the wives like it's like a like, a, like you put a cloth outside to bed in. <laughs> what is wrong with Indian men? <laughs> I'm shocked. No, there's no culture actually. When you beat another living entity, particularly your wives or them, that means you're uncultured. Low class. That's what it is. Okay, 27. The greatest common understanding for all yogis is complete detachment from matter which can be achieved by different kinds of yoga. So, okay, Bhakti Yoga, Yana Yoga, Astanga Yoga, yes, these are the main three branches of yoga. Devotees, Jnanis and Yogis all try to get out of the material entanglement. The Jnanis try to detach their sensual activities from material 
engage him. The jnana yogi thinks that matter is false and that Brahman is true. Uh, he tries, therefore, by cultivation of knowledge to detach the senses from material enjoyment. The Asanga yogi is also try to control the senses. The devotees, however, try to engage the senses in the service of the Lord. Therefore, it appears that the activities of the bhakti devotees are better than those of the jnanis and yogis. The mystic yogis simply try to control the senses by practicing the eight divisions of yoga, yama, niyama, asana, pranayama, pratyara, dharana, dhyana, samadhi. And the jnanis try to mental reasoning, try by mental reasoning to understand the sense enjoyment is false. But the easiest and most direct process is to engage the senses in the service of the Lord. So jnana is almost impossible to practice that. Nowadays it's very impossible. Mm. Yeah. But still there are people who are doing it. Yeah. A lot of them read so much, they talk a lot. <clears throat> uh, they're trying to convince themselves by reading and thinking that, yeah, I have to give up. You know? But it's no practice. Mm. So therefore, even for devotees, you simply read the books too much also is not good enough. You have to do service, service so that it becomes uh, solidified, <laughs> the renunciation. Otherwise, you can't do it. You cannot just, like Prabhupada says, mental reasoning. You have to do it. Um, what is that? Bhukti Mukti Siddhi Kami Shakale Yashanta Krishna Bhakta Nishkam Athe So only when you do Krishna Bhakti, you are peaceful. You do any Karma Yoga, this Yoga, that you will never be peaceful. You cannot be peaceful. Because there's always something you want to achieve. Whereas Bhakti Yoga, you're not trying to achieve anything. You're trying to please Krishna, not for yourself. Whereas in others, there's some selfish endeavor. Whereas here, there's no selfish endeavor. <coughs> yeah. So, but then again, the goal of the yogis are all different. Huh? The Jnana yogis, they want to merge because of lack of proper knowledge that they are meant to serve Krishna. So they want to merge with the Brahman Epochas. And then the, the Asanga Yogis, they are meditating on the Paramatma. They want to merge with the Paramatma. Like that. But the devotees know they are supposed to have a loving relationship. So that's why it is a better... If you... In your own life, you know it's, it's better if you have a loving relationship with anyone rather than a, any other relationship. Right? Superficial relationship won't help you, right? When you need help, who's going to come and help you? Those that have good, loving relationship. So therefore, we have an opportunity to do Krishna consciousness, we should do. Even a little bit is, is, is better than no service to Krishna. Param drishva nivartite. Then you can have that protection at the time of death. Text 28. Jnana me kamparati nae, Jnana me kamparati nae, Indriye Brahma nirgunam, Indriye Brahma nirgunam, Ava bhatyar tarupena, Ava bhatyar tarupena, Pranya shabda di dharmina, Pranya shabda di dharmina. Those who are averse to the transcendence realize the Supreme Absolute truth differently through speculative sense perception. And therefore, because of mistaken speculation, everything appears to them to be relative. Hmm. So this is some of the problems you see in trying to understand the Supreme Lord. <coughs> Lord Krishna says, everything that is experienced is but an expansion of my energy. Everything is sustained by Him, but that does not mean that He is in everything. Sense perception such as oral perception of the sound of a drum, visual perception of a beautiful woman, or perception of the delicious taste of milk preparation by the tongue, all come through different senses and are therefore differently understood. Therefore, sensory knowledge is divided in different categories, although actually everything is one as a manifestation of the energy of the Supreme Lord. Similarly, the energies of fire a heat and illumination, and by these two energies, fire can display itself in many varieties or in 
diversified sense perception. And Mayavadi philosophers declare this diversity to be flaw, false, but Vaishnava philosophers do not accept the different manifestations as false. They accept them as non-different from the Supreme Personality Godhead because they are a display of His diverse energy. So that's this difference. We strive to see Krishna in everything, whereas the others, they don't want to see Krishna in everything. So that's why practicing Krishna conscious means trying to see Krishna in everything we do in our lives. Somehow or other, we have to see where Krishna is. Now, when you take prasada, what do you see? Krishna. No, you see the prasada. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? We are not thinking this is Krishna's mercy. So, but when we do Shadira Abhijagal, that's what we are saying. Yeah, but do you know what you are saying? What's the consciousness? <laughs> we see Bhaji Bonda. <laughs> So, beginning we are seeing like that, but then we have to always say Krishna has given this way. Yeah. This is Krishna, he has tasted this. Then you taste it. how nice it is because he tasted. Yeah. Like, you have to start thinking like that, somehow. So, it's not different from him, like that. So, or if you go out and see the sun, you can say, Oh, look at that. Krishna is so amazing. He can put the sun up in the sky like that. <laughs> so you're saying different things. And then you see a flower, you say, Krishna is so amazing. He created this flower. They're so fragrant. Huh? See a fly flying. You say, how can, who can manufacture that kind of <laughs> body? <laughs> right? That's amazing. So therefore, whatever you see in this material world is real, but they are temporary manifestations of the living entities, uh, desires, or the Lord's energy manifests in different ways. Yeah. Right? You see the rain, clouds coming and so on. All these are the Lord's uh, energies in different way. Okay? Therefore, it is not that Krishna don't exist. He exists. For those who want to see Krishna, we can see Krishna everywhere. For those who don't want to see Krishna, we can't see Krishna. From me comes knowledge, knowledge remembrance. remembrance, and yes. so that's how he is. Maybe they're having a wrestling match. <laughs> it's okay. At least the music is in the mode of goodness. <laughs> You can see how devotees different music means, you know. They are attracted to a different mode. <laughs> so, Prabhupada says about Krishna, he is Ishwara Paramakrishna Satchidanda Vidraha. He has an eternal blissful spiritual body. By our imperfect sense perception, we cannot understand the form of the Lord. We have to know, we have to acquire knowledge about Him. Therefore, He said here, Jnana may come. How do you acquire the knowledge? Service. Service, what else? Serve to serve a spiritual master, serve devotees, and Hearing, quiet, quiet hearing about Krishna, reading about Krishna. How much you do that has to be increased. Daily you have to listen a certain number of hours. Have to. Listen to your Guru Maharaj, listen to Prabhupada, listen. Prabhupada's lectures are usually short. And mostly he talks 45 minutes. It's generally it's 20 to 30 minutes. So what, you lose your life listening for half <laughs> Right? Or your eye issue goes. <laughs> so listen, listen. And then you'll see your knowledge improves. Like that. And then when you talk, you can talk like Prabhupada because then you are trained by Prabhupada. Listening to Prabhupada is training by Prabhupada. Under the mercy of your Guru. Like that. So do that. Then next time when you talk, you'll say, I heard Prabhupada say this, so why are you talking like that? Let us 
discuss this. <laughs> and then you can check the book and say, yes, you're right, I'm wrong, I misunderstood, like that. And that's it, and go on with your Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada continues, because there are a lot of uh, misunderstanding by people in the world. <clears throat> like there are people who are impersonalists, they say there's no difference between uh, you and me, and then they say there's no difference between this fruit and that fruit, right? They all taste different, but they say there's no difference. Then they say there's no difference in that tap water and Ganges water, like that. So Prabhupada says here very nicely, anyone who disregarding by any but anyone who disregarding the pure Ganges wishes to be purified instead by the filthy water flowing in a drain cannot be successful. Right? So they can go outside and take the water of the drain and bathe and say it's no different from Ganges water. What nonsense. It, it's not like that. So only by hearing about the Lord from him or his devotees, you can be successful. You cannot just, on your own mental concoction, say this is Krishna, this is what I understand here. Yeah. So in this verse, it is clearly said that those who are averse to Supreme Personal God here, speculate with their imperfect senses about the nature of the Absolute. The formless Brahman conception, however, can be received only by oral reception and not by personal experience. So, same way, you can only understand Krishna through hearing about Him. Right? Just like Rukmini. Simply by hearing about Him, she developed great affection and finally she got Him. You are not going to have Krishna take an avatar just to come to see you. <laughs> it's already there in the holy names. So it's not going to be a special incarnation for <laughs> each of us. <laughs> it's not going to be like that. <clears throat> okay, so Shastra Yonitvat. One has to acquire pure knowledge from the scriptures, not by speculation. So therefore, Prabhupada always says, as it is, you don't invent something. If you don't understand, hear from someone who knows better. Okay. Baba continues the last paragraph. When uncontaminated pure knowledge is uncovered from the modes of material nature, the actual identity of living entity is discovered. He is eternally a servitor of the Supreme Personality of God. The process of uncovering is like this. The rays of sunshine are luminous and the sun itself is also luminous. In the presence of the sun, the rays, the rays illuminate just like the sun. But when the sunshine is covered by the spell of a cloud or by maya, then darkness, the imperfection of perception begins. Therefore, we get out of the entanglement of the spell of nescience to get out, one has to awaken his spiritual consciousness or Krishna consciousness in terms of the authorized scriptures, not some man-made scripture. Not like that, what? Ravi Shankar, right? Some crazy guy. And there are people who are crazy like him. So birds of feathers flock together. If you want to be cheated, you go with cheaters. If you want to be saved, you go with people who know the method, right? So you can't just anyhow create your own understanding. Text 29. So people who get attracted to Mayavadam, is they are coming from their previous lives or is it because of their Both. current propensities? Both. Both. If they are innocent, they are willing to listen then you can have a conversation. But if they are not, then you know it's deeply ingrained. Well, all you can do is give them prasad and hopefully it gets purified. In any case, you know, if you want to be a Mayavadi, then you have no relationship ultimately. <laughs> so, but then you show affection, then they want that because of the nature of the soul. No? 
So you, you show very nicely effect. They will come and they will sit in your class and talk Mayavadi philosophy, but they are attracted to the group of devotees, right? Mm. So when they talk like that, you should ask them. You say you are nobody and then there's nobody's here, nobody's there, everyone is one, then why are you talking? <laughs> what are you talking? There was one devotee who practiced Mayavada for 15 years, sincere, mm. but then he became devotee after hearing. Yeah, so then he is sincere. Yeah. No initiative. <laughs> They always talk something like, you know, I am God, you are God, like that. My, you are God, why are you suffering? I'm covered by the material nature. But you created the material nature, why you let it suffer you? Pastime. What pastime, Rasta? <laughs> <laughs> pastime is for you to enjoy, not suffer. That is the definition of pastime. So you rascal, how you talk? Right? So then you say, this is pastime, you take a stick and beat <laughs> So you're fast. not the body. Yeah, you're not the body. So why are you uh, suffering then, right? This is your Leela. I am you, you are me. So I'm only beating myself. That's such a nonsense philosophy. <laughs> so next time they talk, you say, I'm going to beat you now with a stick. Please accept it. Because I am beating myself. And see how they talk. Right? Text twenty nine. From the total energy, the Mahatattva, I have manifested the false ego. The three modes of material nature, the five material elements, the individual consciousness, the eleven senses, and the material body. Similarly, the entire universe has come from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Mahat Pada, the Lord is described, which means that the total material energy known as Mahat Tattva is lying at his lotus feet, which is true. If you look at the pictures of uh, Mahavishnu, you can see it doesn't come near the Lord at all. He's at the far end. <laughs> and so it's like uh, this lotus feet. The origin of the total energy of the cosmic manifestation is the Mahatat. Before everything can uh, manifest as the universe, the Mahatat must be formed. From the Mahatattva, through the combination of different uh, modes, you have the 24 divisions, namely 11 senses, which includes the mind, the five sense objects, the five material elements, and then consciousness, intelligence, and false ego. All of these are created within the Mahatattva. And this is the Sarga the creation, <coughs> creation by the Supreme Lord. So all these Sarga things are created by the Lord. And then later on, when the cosmic manifestation within each universe is supposed to be done, uh, the Virat Rupa who takes form, he enters into all the different universes. And then Brahma who has this Virat Rupa incarnation who enters into him, is empowered to create. Then Prabhupada talks about Krishna or the Lord being independent. You know, the word Swara is very significant here. Swara mm. means independent. The Supreme Lord is independent and the individual soul is always so independent. Although there is no comparison between the two qualities of independence, the living entity is minutely independent and the Supreme Lord is fully independent. So that's the difference. And what does minute independence mean? Only to desire. Hmm? Only to desire. Desire what? what uh, oneness with the uh, purpose of the Lord. Yeah. It's either you desire Krishna or you desire Maya. That's all. That's our independence. That's it. Don't think our independence. What else do you have to independence? You have no other. And then when you have knowledge, what is our full knowledge? Yeah, that's it. Our knowledge, when we say Satchit Ananda, 
the sad chit that the knowledge means we are servants of krishna and we are no we know how to serve krishna that's all we have not knowledge about the <laughs> everything else no if we need krishna will reveal to us but otherwise full knowledge means how to serve krishna yes. is already in us okay how to love krishna is already in us <clears throat> so everything else is not correct understanding Prabhupada also says one has to understand the difference, the differences with intelligence. Everyone knows that his material body has developed from a spiritual spark, and similarly, the universal body has developed from the supreme spark, super soul. As the individual body develops from the individual soul, the gigantic body of the universe develops from the supreme soul. Just as the individual soul has consciousness, the supreme soul is also conscious. But although there is a similarity between the consciousness of the supreme soul and the consciousness of the individual soul, the individual soul's consciousness is limited, whereas the supreme soul is unlimited. So the Lord is in all of our hearts, and we are also conscious of our body, but we are not conscious of the supreme Lord at the moment because we are not practicing or trying to. connect with him so we are conscious of our body and what our bodies go through but the lord is conscious of every all of our bodies every body every element he's conscious sarvashetra yeah so sarvashetra you can understand him kshetra jam chapi mam vidhi he's he's present in every body not just one body okay we'll stop here any comments questions <coughs> hmm? one more why because that it's small was there a number okay <laughs> no wrong thing is taking three oh okay last verse <laughs> ஹேபாசேனோஸ்வீஸ் வித் ஃபேத் steadiness and full detachment and who is always absorbed in part of the supreme he is aloof from material association so all these things is something you need to compare for your own practices uh, you can ask yourself am i engaging in devotional service first then you ask yourself am i engaging in devotional service with faith or am i just doing it because people tell me to do i'm just doing then when you're doing it yes i have faith you have to ask how steady i am do i do it always or just do it when i feel like it and then if i'm doing it am i expecting some results some recognition from other devotees like that so all this you have to contemplate and ultimately who am i doing it for why am i doing it am i doing it so that i feel good i am god <laughs> am i the enjoyer no so is krishna happy with what i am doing how do i know krishna is happy so you have to think like that he is a low from material association krishna is a low from material association so that is important huh? <clears throat> so if you are pursuing any other way you will not understand what this is all about you know prabhara is the atheistic mystic practitioner yoga cannot understand this perfect knowledge uh, perfect knowledge who krishna is knowledge that krishna and i have a relationship you know these things are not revealed by the atheistic personalities and just like the atheistic person hiranyakashipu also he was trying to get power from the material energy but he won't accept god <laughs> therefore he could not understand who krishna is so when we practice and when we think like this krishna will give us intelligence to attain him 
in the by the end of this life and this is possible okay samadhi and samahi tatma they are the same thing so first develop the devotion practice nicely and that is what kapila muni is telling devahuti now we'll stop here okay <laughs> Thank you very much. Jai. Thank you. Same, same.